Well, time for another video. Doing something a little different today. Um, we're doing a restoration on a uh, Stax Energizer slash driver unit. Now, I know quite a few people are asking what the hell is a Stax? What the hell is an Energizer or a driver unit? So, you know, you've got your, um, your common headphone types, your, your Dynamics, your Planars. Um, this is another type of headphone system known as electrostatic headphones. Now, they, they, the principles are a fair bit different, um, but the short version of it is they require a specific driver or amplifier just to run the headphones or ear speakers as they're known in the Stax world. Now, this unit takes your normal RCA signals on the back and dials it up through these custom outputs. Um, so we've got two versions here. We've got Pro, Normal. Normal's a lower voltage. The Pro is what we're focusing on, uh, which is what the new standard is for stacks. And they run your ear speakers that are strapped to your head at uh, like 580 volts. <laughs> so these are pretty cool bits of gear. Uh, bits of gear. Um, and this one is very old. This is an SRM-1 Mark II. And the Mark II signifies that it supports pro uh, ear speakers instead of just normal ones. Um, so yeah, this one is a oh, 19... Whoop, reflections. 1988 vintage Japanese-made Stax Energizer. Um, yeah, so she's old. She needs some love. And uh, I've already taken the screws off just so we can have a peek inside. And yeah, so they're, um, you know, they share a lot of similarities with certain amplifier designs, but there's a, there's a lot of differences as well. We've got the input transformer, filtering caps, the rectifiers are buried down there, or rectifier circuit, should I say. It's just some diodes and some caps. Um, we have our output uh, MOSFETs, I believe they are. have to look at the schematic for this thing. Um, we've got our load resistors down here. I like some of the design details, like they've got holes drilled in the circuit board, which allows some convection, like some airflow through. That's pretty cool. Uh, we have an ALPS potentiometer volume control by the looks of it, which is a nice, nice bit of kit from the era. Hopefully that's all good uh, once we do some proper testing with the thing. Um, yeah, so I've already run this uh, uh, energizer and tested it and it's working pretty well. Um, it sounds fine, but I think we can put some life back into it. I, I already loosened up all these adjustment trim pots and calibrated the voltages on the output just to make sure it was within spec before I plugged very expensive uh, ear speakers into it. <laughs> um, yeah, and it calibrated fine, but there, yeah, there were some things that I noticed that uh, hopefully will improve once we do a, a full rebuild on it. Um, so we're replacing the filter caps. There's another one here. We're going to try changing the diodes. I got some ultra fast replacement diodes that should be suitable. So we're just going to pay attention to that because we can't. I can't find an exact part number for what was in there because not much is written. Um, and we're going to be changing all these blue capacitors, which 95% sure are ceramic capacitors and not film capacitors. Uh, I could be wrong, but um, we're going to be changing all those with polypropylene caps. Um, these trim pots are touchy and they like to stick and sort of pop when you try to, to adjust them. So they're going away. We're going to put some multi-turn uh, burns, burns trim pots, yeah. Um, the output 
um, modules, we're going to be taking them out and redoing the thermal paste because uh, they're not looking good. <laughs> They've definitely been in a smoker's environment by the looks of it. Uh, but at the very least, they are dried out to hell and back. Um, we may change these polystyrene caps, but I think I'm going to leave them. But I have replacements, so just so we know, we've got a little box of goodies here. Um, yeah, we've got new caps. Um, these caps are bigger than the originals. They are 220s, uh, 220 microfarad instead of uh, 100s. Uh, and they are smaller as well, so that's... Um, yeah, it's, it's amazing how far capacitor technology has come. Now, we have some thermal paste here. I'm either going to use this or I'm going to use just normal silicon thermal paste. I have sill pads as well, but I don't know if I'm going to use these. I prefer to use the originals if I can. Uh, we have diodes, uh, polypropylene caps, and burn trim pots, burn trim pots, uh, some bigger caps. Uh, they're the replacement polystyrenes if I do fit them. I haven't decided yet. And more caps. That's a pretty straightforward-ish rebuild. Just got to be careful with a few things. Um, the caps will be straightforward. If you've never done caps before, you should always do them on anything this old. I mean, what are we pushing 30-something years old on this unit now? And rated life is usually around 10 years for most caps. Uh, not to say that these don't work, but uh, you'd be amazed the difference it makes when you put some new stuff in these units. They just sort of come back to life again with the vitality of the sound. Yeah, so um, really beautiful unit. We're going to get started on this. I'm going to do a bit of a time lapse. Um, I'm just going to check some voltages on here before we change the... Uh, diodes and everything just to make sure it stays where it's supposed to be um, when the trim pots come out we're going to be measuring the stock ones where they're currently adjusted to setting the multi-turn trim pots before they go in to match whatever that adjustment was originally set to to try and keep it in the ballpark so we don't just send it into overdrive when we fire it back up again uh, yeah and then we'll um, we'll get started. So this is going to be a bit of a longer video. Uh, I thought I'd try doing a longer video for a change. So keep that in mind. If it's not your jam, I'm sure you'll find something else to watch. Let's get started. Bam. Okay, so a bit of an intermission. Um, the power supply is done by the looks of it. Everything should be all good. So we've got new filter capacitors, smaller cap down there. Uh, buried in there, we have all new uh, ultra fast diodes and some new polypropylene caps to replace the ceramics. They're a bit big. So I had to sort of just bend them a little bit to, uh, to fit in there. Um, had to take the side cover off just to get access to the bottom caps. A um, little bit of collateral damage just here and there um, from lifting the original caps. The legs sometimes bind to the traces and they're just hard to get off. Um, yeah, so unfortunately I had they got a little damage, but in, in reality, it doesn't affect anything because the majority of the trace, sorry, the trace side is fully intact and you still got good coverage around there. And it's on the back side here as well, which is good. So the, the trace side of it is still in good condition. Uh, there was only two casualties. The rest of them are fine. The rest of the soldering's good. Real pain in the butt Japanese stuff because they tend to fold over the legs on all the 
semiconductors and what it components and whatnot, uh, which makes them very difficult to remove without damaging anything. Um, yeah, so I fired it up, voltage is all good, no fire, which is um, <laughs> a good sign. So I think we're gonna tackle, what are we gonna do next? I think we're gonna go for these trim pots next. Um, Cause uh, yeah, I'm sort of dreading those. So we're gonna take these out. Uh, one at a time, we're going to measure the legs to get the correct orientation for the new ones and then set the new ones according to what these ones are currently set to, just as our starting point. And we will continue this adventure. Here's all the old caps. <laughs> they're, um, they're pretty damn big compared to the old ones, considering the old ones are twice, uh, sorry, the new ones are twice the size of these. So 100 microfarad versus 220. So these things are chonkers. And um, they still test fine. Uh, I don't have an ESR meter though, not on me. Uh, but <laughs> they're old, yeah? You don't, people wanna leave them, leave stuff vintage, but you don't achieve anything by doing it. The new stuff, and especially when it comes to components like capacitors, is just superior. Um, yeah, what brand is this one? Marcon. Never really seen a Marcon capacitor before, so that's an interesting one. I don't know if that's a good or a bad brand. Normally, um, I believe these are... I have no idea what these are either. Interesting. Well, they've lasted, so they've got to be good. <laughs> and yeah, some old ceramics, some old diodes. There's some more diodes over here. Um, I'm just going to break for lunch quickly and then we'll keep going. Okay, so I decided to just remove one of them straight away because they don't take long to get out and they're just mounted straight through, uh, unlike the other one. So I've taken out that one. Now, what I've done is I've marked the PCB for all the trim pots just so I know the orientation of them when they come out. It's a bit hard to screw this up, but it can happen. So yeah, um, Jesus, it's a bit hard to get a good shot. There we go. So basically all I do is I look at the, the legs on the bottom so there's an orientation of three and I sit it down there and I measure one side just to confirm what it was set to before and I set it on these new ones before they go in. And this is just to make sure I put them in the correct way around and that they're pretty much set where they're supposed to be. Now, you might ask, why do I do this? Well, because these new ones are parallel and they're just all straight. So you've got to bend the legs to match the old one. And you just want to make sure you orientate it correctly. And, um, you know, so when you're dropping it in, you've set it where it needs to be. And uh, it should be all good to go. So we're going to... Um, get all these swapped out and hopefully no boo-boos. Let's get started. Alrighty. So, trim pots are changed. Um, glad to get these out, to be honest. So we've got these multi-turn burns trim pots installed. Um, orientation is correct, and for anyone who's wondering what I mean by orientation, they're not necessarily polarized, but you wanna make sure that all the trim pots are set up in a way so you're turning them clockwise to turn up the resistance or counterclockwise to turn down the resistance and just getting them correct because as you saw, they're all sort of in line pins and you've got to bend them accordingly to sort of fit in this, uh, this crazy um, layout. So yeah, I got these out. These are definitely, I think these are gonna make a pretty big difference to this because the resistance is rock solid on these. These ones, 
uh, jumping around like crazy just by touching them, flexing them a little bit. And I reckon heat is definitely going to send these way out of whack. Um, they're just, uh, they've had their day, to be honest. I'm sure they were great back in the 80s. Um, but as many things, these are a crap load better. And they allow much finer adjustments as well, which is another big benefit to these multi-turn trimmers. So what are we going to do next? Um, so we've got to do these caps still. We've got to do this thermal compound. Uh, I think we're going to start with these outputs. I'm going to pull them out. Uh, I'm going to take out this whole module actually and redo them all, uh, which may or may not be fun. We'll find out. And then I can get into this area to do all these capacitors. Uh, most of them are pretty easy to get to. Uh, but those ones may be a little tricky, so it's probably easier to just to have this unit removed and then we can uh, do it all in one hit. So let's uh, hit another time lapse. Alrighty, uh, pretty much done with this project. Everything went well, no fireworks. Just doing the uh, calibrations per the service manual at the moment. And uh, we're getting good results. Now, just to anyone who's wondering or who decides to dabble in one of these things, uh, they are very very thermally sensitive. So you have to warm these things up for about an hour, two hours uh, before you do the calibration on them with the cover on. So you need something that goes down through. You really shouldn't be using a metal screwdriver, but I like to chance it. And um, yeah, to get to your trim pots. Because uh, yeah, this thing's class A and it runs freaking hot. And yeah we're all done you can see all the new caps she's looking fantastic all new thermal compound a little messy but uh it's not <laughs> it's not an easy thing to do when you're using the mica films yeah these are uh, trim pots these new blue ones are way better than the old ones. I can definitely tell you that. They calibrate way better. They are way less touchy and um, definitely worthwhile along with the new caps. I can't wait to listen to this thing. Anyway, uh, I will be back with a review of this at a later stage. I may even do a comparison to my dynamic headphones if uh, that interests anyone. You can already see the calibration starting to to fluctuate now since I took the cover off. Yeah, that's how much it starts to jump when the temperature changes. Pretty crazy. Yeah, so I'm gonna put this cover back on, I'm gonna do one last adjustment, and then we're gonna, oh, I'm gonna have a listening session because I wanna hear this thing. Anyway, see you in the next video.